Hello and welcome to this update on the New Ireland Fund. To talk about the fund, I'm joined by Noel O'Halloran, our Chief Investment Officer and the Lead Portfolio Manager for the fund. Noel, uh, can you start with a basic introduction to the fund, what's in it and what it is? Yeah, the New Ireland uh, Fund is a closed-end investment fund incorporated in 1989 uh, with the objective of investing primarily in the securities of listed Irish equities. Um, so we will always have a minimum of 80% invested in, in Irish securities and we're allowed 20% in non-Irish companies. Okay, and how many stocks in the fund? As of today, we have 25 stocks in the portfolio. It typically ranges 20 to 25. Uh, and today, two of those are non-Irish. So we have over 90% of the portfolio today invested in Ireland. And what kind of themes or stories are you running within the portfolio? What, what themes, sectors and ideas do you like within the portfolio at the moment? Yeah, well, at the moment, I'm particularly positive on the macro outlook for Ireland. Ireland's in a really good place from an economic perspective. So also are Ireland's trading partners, Europe in particular, as well as the US. So within that, I like companies that are more exposed to that. And I pick two themes. Uh, first theme, I would say, is construction related mm -hmm. companies. So within that, just to name three companies that are within the portfolio, uh, Ireland's largest company, uh, CRH, uh, a global player in building materials, not just in Ireland, but also in the US and Europe. Um, another name, Kingspan, which you may not be as familiar with, is a very specialist building materials uh, provider, uh, particularly specialist in environmental friendly cladding products. Uh, and the third name, and one of the two non-Irish uh, holdings in the portfolio at the moment, San Gaban, which is a French building materials company and one of Europe's largest. Uh, away from construction, the other uh, theme I like at the moment is the consumer. Uh, I think the Irish consumer is well placed at the moment but so also is tourism. So we have a sort of uh, th three or four names in the portfolio that combine both of those. Uh, number one I'd highlight is Delata, which is Ireland's largest listed hotel operator. Operates brands such as the Maldron or the Clarion Hotels. Uh, so a big beneficiary of tourism, as well as the Irish consumer. Uh, another one that I'd highlight is Apple Green, which is a, a large operator of gas stations in Ireland. Um, but not just gas stations, they also have very specialist convenience stores. Mm. So that sort of transient consumer uh, with more tourism is also uh, benefiting their business. Uh, a third stock I'd highlight is Ryanair, Ireland's largest, in fact Europe's largest um, airline. Last year Ryanair carried more passengers than any other airline in Europe. And then finally I'd highlight another company in the tourism transport sector, Irish Continental Group, which is Ireland's largest ferry operator. In terms of then, why Ireland in the first place? Why is Ireland an attractive place to invest in? And why would you suggest to investors that they would look at the New Ireland Fund from, from an overall picture in terms of investing in Ireland? What's attractive about Ireland? I think Ireland's got lots of unique features. I think uh, it's a small open economy. Uh, the Irish, with like your comments on the travel, I mean, we've always traveled. I think sure. Irish companies particularly well traveled as well. So um, much, many of the companies have firstly, the strength of a very strong domestic economy. Uh, they have also the strength of very unique business models in many cases, very strong management, very well respected management. And I think that is what makes Ireland unique and has made the, the New Ireland Fund unique since, since its launch back in the late 1980s. And what about risks, Noel? What, what, what worries you? There must be some risks in the portfolio. Yeah, I suppose the first thing I'll highlight is it's a stock specific portfolio. I have 25 stocks in the portfolio. So I do need to worry that I'm on top of all of those 25 names. So that means I visit those companies a couple of times a year. I keep on top of their earnings and their business model. Uh, so that's a stock specific risk. Uh, earnings risk is always something that we need to watch. Uh, Ireland specific risk, you know, Ireland is a small open economy as we said, so it's vulnerable to external forces, uh, but that's, that's a macro risk. Uh, and I suppose at the moment from a macro perspective, Brexit, you know, Ireland's uh, the UK's largest beneficiary and trading partner from a, from a, from a trade point of view. So, but I might turn Brexit over to you, you know, from, from your perspective as an economist, where do you see Brexit and the outlook for the Irish economy? Turning the tables on me. I, I think that, yeah, that there's two uh, aspects of Brexit, I think, to be continue, to be considered, Noel. The first is the impact on businesses in Ireland that import from or export to the UK. They're directly affected by the fact that the UK has decided to leave the world's late, largest trading bloc um, and, and, and pl plough its own furrow, so to speak, go its own way. And companies that are importing from or exporting to the UK have to try and figure out what tariff barriers 
barriers are going to be in place, what barriers to trade, how easy it's going to be to trade with the UK or how difficult it is. And they're faced with tremendous uncertainty. Not only do they not know what will happen, but they don't even know when it will happen. So will there be a transition deal that takes the deadline out more than two years from now, or will there be a hard stop at the end of two years and then all the new arrangements will have to be in place by then? So that may, does make it difficult for Irish businesses. It's not easy. Then you have the indirect impact in terms of all the businesses, not necessarily the trade with the UK, but maybe their customers trade with the UK or within their supply chain that's trade with the UK. So definitely a concern and of course markets don't like uncertainty but, but businesses don't like uncertainty about that going forward. So that's the obvious worry. Now as against that you have to think about the fact that Ireland also benefits in some ways because of course as I said already the UK has decided to cut itself off from the largest trading bloc on the planet and there are lots of businesses in the UK particularly international businesses that are saying hang on now is the UK a good place to operate is the UK a good base to export to the EU from and saying no it's not so where do we go instead and they're looking to a location like Ireland which is 50 miles across the sea has the same language similar culture it's a pretty easy place to move your business to so we're seeing some offset from Brexit some positive side of Brexit in terms of businesses moving to Ireland Finally, I'd say that if ever there was a time for Brexit to, for, for a negative to uh, happen to the economy in a way, uh, this is maybe one of the better times for it to happen. The economy is very strong at the moment. At the moment, it's growing at, at probably around the 5% pace. It grew at 5% last year, probably something similar uh, this year. Unemployment is low. So if you do have to get a negative shock, this is a pretty good time to take it. So those positives have to be considered alongside the obvious negatives. I mean, Ireland's had a unique and very positive history with America as well. Does the Trump, Trump administration concern you at all? Well, there are two aspects of the new administration's policies that would give some cause for concern, or cause for thought at least, uh, and, and, and you know, force us to think about them. The first is tax. Um, the US tax system viewed from outside the US is a bit of a mess. It, it hasn't been reformed in many years and it's outdated. It doesn't fit in well with the international tax regime. And as a result, a lot of businesses have found themselves you know, with huge benefits by relocating to outside the US. That's true. And an awful lot of them, when they do move out, the US pick Ireland not really for because of Ireland's particular tax regimes in general there might be some exceptions but because Ireland is a great place to do business now the question is will that continue if there's proper tax reform in the US and the answer is probably not if they do a proper tax reform in the US then not as many businesses will be pretty much forced or pressured to move out of the US however I think it's very important to distinguish between new businesses moving out of the US and businesses that are already located in Ireland from the US and the businesses that have already located in Ireland are doing very well all the surveys, all the indications are that those businesses really like Ireland as a place to do business in and that it's very unlikely that they're going to start moving jobs back. So that's the tax side of things. On international trade, it's a bit harder to judge. Um, if you listen to the rhetoric of uh, President Trump, particularly during his campaign, you would think, well, you know, he's going to start a trade war. There's going to be a lot of trade uh, disputes and, 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 and disruption around the world. But we don't really know if that will happen in practice. And if it does, it doesn't seem likely to hit for some time. If it does, if there is large-scale trade disruption, Ireland is an, an open economy, it is exposed to the world, it will experience some difficulties. So will every economy pretty much in the world that's exposed to international trade. So yes, it's a potential negative, but it's a fair bit, a fair bit away, I think, at this stage. Uh, and you'd have to assume that common sense will prevail and that in, in reality you're not going to see large-scale large, large scale widespread uh, wars. I don't think that's, uh, trade wars, I don't think that's very likely. So net net, your take on the current take on the Irish economy? I mean, the outlook for the next couple of years? I, I think that's a pretty easy one, not, notwithstanding the risks we talked about. The Irish economy is growing at 5% and I think that's set to continue. Something around that level of growth is set to continue, which will be, I think, the strongest in the Eurozone. It has been and will continue to be. It's far faster than most large developed or even medium-sized developed uh, countries are growing at. Uh, I, I think it, that's, that's being achieved because of the favourable uh, favorable economic conditions in Ireland. Uh, you know, interest rates extremely low um, and likely to stay that because the European Central Bank is not likely to be racing to put up interest rates anytime soon. Fiscal policy is reasonably sensible. The government doesn't seem likely to do anything that's going to threaten the recovery through fiscal policy. And Ireland is a good place to do business in terms of its tax regime, in terms of its education system, in terms of the skills available and a whole range of areas where Ireland scores incredibly well in international surveys. I mean really, really well as one of the best countries in the world to do business in. Against that kind of environment, I'm not too concerned about Brexit and the other risks we talked about. Certainly it might have some impact on growth, but I have to say the overall story is a very positive one still for the Irish economy. 
grateful as the portfolio manager. That's a very positive background for the fund and for the stocks that I'm investing in. Well, let's hope so, No. Thanks for joining us today. If you're looking for more information on the fund, it's available on the internet at the website address you can see on screen now. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye.